John chapter 8, 31 to 32, Jesus said, If you abide in my word, you are my disciple indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. This is a biblical word spoken by Jesus in the Gospel book of John. Ever imagine the same word translated into your own native language? In this insight, we introduce you to Life of Theovision International in Kenya, taking you through the paths they tread in the endeavor to make all people hear God's voice in their own language. Take two. Now wapigia upinde, wakamkamata, na kumjerugi vibaya. They grant you the opportunity to share in the experiences of their technical team, which traverses East Africa, recording the Bible in mother tongue in the remote villages. It started 23 years ago by a Ghanaian international Theodore Asore. Theovision International set foot in Kenya in 2002 as a non-profit organization with a mission of translating God's message, the Bible, in audio form, thus translating the Bible in mother tongues of different native communities around East, West, and Central Africa. Helen Etiang is the country director of Theovision International. The founder himself, who is Reverend Theo, and one staff, they didn't have money, but they continued like that. And um, <clears throat> it actually took five years to record one Bible in one language. That was the initial. They didn't have the technology to do it. They just the small material and equipment that they had, that's what they used. Uh, <clears throat> that was 1989 when it started. It continued. Uh, to grow, they continued recording uh, languages. They now got more equipment and uh, more experience on how to do the recording in the up to the uh, late 90s. And then they started branches. Your vision did her survey and found out that. About 70% of Africa's population was illiterate and therefore not able to read. They thought the only effective way to take the Bible closer to such a population was to translate it into their own mother tongue in audio form, thus taking the audio Bible into villages, schools, hospitals and public centers. The need came when he realized that many people in Africa were not able to read. And so he saw that the audio Bible would be a good tool for people to listen to the Word of God. It is very effective because after the rec recording the Bible, we take the audio Bible to the villages. Now where people can sit together in groups and listen to the Word of God. Not only in villages, we use it, the audio Bible in schools, in prisons, in hospitals, where, uh, so that now everyone is able to interact with the Word of God freely. There are many hardships her technical team has to endure in the process of recording, which includes adapting to a new culture, recording in war torn regions, dealing with extreme weather, and persecution in countries of different religions, such as Muslims. The technicians that we have come from different uh, cultural backgrounds. So the first thing, they, when they get there, they find that is a different culture and they have to try as much as possible to interact with the people of, of that area. They have to try as much as possible to be accepted in that area so that they can begin the work. And the food is different also, which becomes a major challenge. And sometimes traveling to that village is a problem because of impassable roads they have to take bicycles or motorbikes and sometimes they have to walk a very long distance to get to the de destination. Our technicians have experienced a lot of those difficulties, especially those um, countries that uh, have uh, of other faith other than Christian. Yeah. Sometimes they have to really hide. You, you go and you don't see what you're going to do. But you go underground and you, you, you do your work underground. The, one time where our technicians went to a certain country and they had to be evacuated after two weeks because of the hosti hostility. 
in that country. Full Bible recording takes six months and it is done with different characters as depicted in the Bible. For example, there is a Jesus character, prophets, God, the Pharisees, kings, among others. If you look at the New Testament, we have very many characters. So we have narrowed it down to 25 characters. We have, uh, we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Jesus, uh, the part of God, the part of uh, Pilate, Mary, and so forth. And therefore, every person is assigned different voices. So if you're reading the part of Jesus, you read all parts of Jesus from the beginning of Matthew to Revelation. You only read parts that were said by Jesus. If you are reading the part of Pilate, you only read parts of Pilate. If it is devil, you only read the parts of devil. And therefore, uh, at the end, a person will be doing his or her part and go. When you finish, you go. When you finish, you go. So at the end, if we have recorded entire New Testament, what we do, we do now a pending and there will be a flow. This is why uh, I was saying this is a dramatized New Testament recording. Inabidi uwe na sauti ambayo inaonyesha kwamba Mungu anaongea na nabii anamweleza waambie watu wangu jambo hili na hili na hili. Au pengine ni malaika. Naye huwa anapewa ujumbe na Mungu anaambiwa muambie. Haya yote wewe ambao unashughulika kusoma inabidi uyaelewe. Before the Bible is translated into a given language, a research is done on a particular language and a suitable person who is a proofreader identified through auditions that are done at the field. Once a language and a reader is identified, then the work is prepared. It is not an easy task to identify the right people for the job. In the beginning, we identify a language that we want to record. For example, we identify the need if it is Trukana, we go to Trukana, we do a research. And the research involves um, getting to see whether we can find people who can be able to read. We can read fluently in the Trukana language. And then after the research, now we have identified the people who can be able to read. And then we now come back, we do the preparation and then go back for the recording. Mm -hmm. Now the recording process, we will send two technicians who will go to the field. They will stay in the field where at that location for as long as they can be able to finish that recording. The recording of New Testament uh, basically takes six weeks to record and the Old Testament will take six months. But in the field, when we go to the field, what we do we buy a, a form, we buy a one inch form or blankets, that is if there's no forms, then uh, we make a small booth uh, without a, 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 a screen, the, uh, without, uh, uh, we make it, uh, we, we make a small booth and then uh, inside the booth we do the padding, either using foam or blankets. Technically, during translation reading, there are three people involved. The words translator, the proofreader who must be an eloquent speaker of that particular language in subject. The work of the proofreader is to ensure all words are pronounced and articulated properly. There is also the reader who must be eloquent too to deliver the right biblical message. How a jamaa wasiwa tahiriwa watakuja kunichoma na kunitendea vibaya. These are the setup that we will use in the field. When we go to the field, we do a setup uh, of this kind. And therefore, this laptop is used for recording the voice uh, from the studio. And the other laptop is the director's laptop. Now him, he is directing the person in the studio where to read. And as he reads, the director and uh, both the, the proofreader helps to check on what he is reading. So just in case if there is a mistake, if he has not pronounced the word correctly, the proofreader and even the director will tell him, you need to repeat from here. And he will be showing him using even the cursor 
uh, and uh, then the, the, the person in the studio will repeat from wherever place is supposed to be uh, repeated. When we are recording, uh, we will get like uh, three or four people in a day. Uh, uh, people who read in shifts, uh, let's say you read for like two, uh, two hours or one and a half hours, then uh, uh, you let another person come in and uh, take on. Filippo Omar is a Tanzanian. He is in Kenya as a proofreader for Kiswahili version translation. Kwa, kwa injili, unajua kwanza Biblia ina maneno mengine magumu sana. Unapo soma, kuna majina ambao ni magumu kutamuka na huelewi maana yake. Yako maneno ambayo ukiyasoma yana yanakupa hali ya kuto kuelewa kwamba e, huu ni mti au ni mtu au ni mto au ni jiwe. Kwa hiyo katika Biblia tunapo chukua hatua labda ya kumfikishia mtu inabidi kwanza kwanza uelewe ile neno maana yake ni nini. Kwa sababu kuna mwingine ukimwambia kuhusu ukasoma tu maziwa. Kwa mtu wa, wa, wa hali ile ya chini kule katika sehemu za vijiji au sehemu zingine anafikiri ni matiti. Kwa sababu kwao ma, maziwa ni matiti. Kwa inabidi ufafanue. Kwa kuna mambo mengi magumu katika Biblia ambayo yanahitajika kueleweka. In their effort to take the recorded word to the people has borne so much fruit. The company's joy is to see the recording complete and the Bible brought back to people to listen and see lives transformed. Once you put for someone to listen and they listen in their own language, it makes a whole big difference. Walking into their library, you find even audio Bibles in Somali languages, Nigerian languages, Kikuyu, Luo, and even Luya. Okay, this is our library. This is where we put some of the audio Bibles that we have recorded, and there are a few books that uh, go along, plus the printed Bibles. So, for example, this is the Somali Bible that we have recorded. This is the Old Testament, Genesis and Exodus. This is um, the single voice. The company's core business is to sell these audio Bibles, partnering with other organizations in a bid to see their mission achieved. And in five years strategically, they hope to have covered the whole African languages. One audio Bible goes for between 500 to 2,000 Kenyan shillings.